Oh, that's it, just the gears come back. All right, so I know yesterday we spent a lot of time doing those factor trees and talking about breaking numbers down, and that was just kind of like a kind of like warm up to get you thinking about factors. So here I'm not asking you to make a factor tree. I'm actually just I'm asking you to find a different kind of factor. Uh, that's what you guys are using. So, um, 15 and 3 both divide by 3. So, their greatest common factor is 3. Because this is 3 times 5 times W, and this is 3 times V. So I'm going to factor the 3 out of both of these. And then in parentheses, I'm going to indicate what would be left over. I have something to think about. Um, would the GPS be used to because it's got 3, yeah. 7 in both? So um, what's left over here, if I divide a 3 out, would be 5W. And over here would just be minus V. This is your answer. This is really the only thing you have to show. You don't have to show any other work. So I know that 27 and 18, they both divide by 3. So I'm tempted to factor 3 out, but they also both divide by This number is 3 times 9 times y times y. And this number is 2 times 9 times y. And this is not required. You're not required to do this. This can be helpful. Got your 9 out front. And then when you divide 9 away from 27, 27 divided by 9 is 3. Uh-oh. Looks like I also need to take a y out. They both have y in common as well. So I take the 9 and y and put it up front. And what's left over here is 3y. And what's left over here is just 2. Yeah. We did. A, we started with a whole tree. Well, and I showed fractions, so I'm gonna actually show you. Uh, yeah, I think we're doing some more on this one. Well, we gotta use. We just divide it all out. So in a polynomial, when the first term is negative, oftentimes it's most helpful to take a negative root to that. No. So uh, this number would be like negative 2 times 2 times a times a. And this number would be negative 2 times 4 times a times b times b. Why is there a negative 4 out of the first one? I guess it's there because you just did the negative 2 times 2. So I'm going to take a negative 2 and an A out. So what's left here? Um, I take the negative 2 and the A out. What's left here is a positive 2A. So when you take a negative out, 
the left or the right or the left? Negative 10 over the 10 that's left is a positive 4b squared. I don't have a negative 2 to take out of here. So if I divide negative 2a out, it's going to leave me with negative b. So taking a negative out is going to turn this to be a negative value. And you can write plus or negative. I really like subtraction better. Last one for All right, it looks like um, even though the first two both divide by 7, like Patrick said, the last one doesn't. So our GCF is just going to be a variable this time. Sometimes you can't take a number. Sometimes you only take one result. There's a lot of those out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here, since I took out the exact term, put a 1. Everybody check your answer. Did you put a 1? Where the UT was that was taken out. Most likely, yeah. Who knows, right? Multiply by? Hmm. Hey, when you log out, let's look at it this way. Yes, I actually did it. Did they tell you to do your homework? Yes. Tony, put your phone in your backpack. You didn't even finish ball work. Tony, you didn't know. You didn't do it before. They're absolutely right. They're absolutely right. Part of it. I was busy last night doing chemistry. Chemistry in general. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's good for him. I didn't put my hair down. I wasn't blowing my eyes. I made two. Okay. Is that right? <laughs> Five two, two. <laughs> subtract five two. Alyssa, why are you being a hater
Eleven and twelve. I saw a lot of you didn't take an N out here. Was there an N in yours? You took an N? Which one should I do? I can show some, right? Oh, yeah, I got 12 right, let's go. Pick one. Pick one. All right, I'm going to show it over 12 in a different way. Um, more like what I did yesterday, but a little shorter. Here, you guys be quiet. So, your goal is always to get what you started with. Okay? So, if I was to distribute this P into here, I would have that. And if I distribute the P into the middle, it would give me that. So I need a 1 here so that I can distribute P times 1 to create this. If I don't put a 1 placeholder, it's like that first term never existed. So the 1 placeholder is essential to, to recreate the original problem. Mm -hmm, because 56 divided by 8, so they, so it's the greatest factor. You could have used 4 or 2, but it's the greatest number. Yeah. So another way to do it could be 8 decimal fractions I showed yesterday. So like on 12, I can see that all of these are even. Um, so I want to pick a greatest common factor of 2. If you can't find a greatest common factor and they're even, you can start with 2. And then maybe if it divides by 2, you just do it again. I can see that they all have an H, and I can see that they all have an N. So the fraction method, I didn't do it in bow work, I just circled. But the fraction method puts the GCF under here. And then whatever's left in parentheses is the result from like division. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. And I have three H's over one H. So you use that like subtraction property. Three minus one would leave H squared. And three minus one would leave N squared. You guys like that fraction method? Mm -hmm. So two divided by two leaves a one here. H over H cancels. Mm -hmm. And two minus one leaves N to the first. And now here, 14 divided by 2 is 7. H and H cancel, and N and N cancel. So you may very well like the fraction method better than this circle in this mess. We'll do it in the next one, but under 10. So that you want everyone on the same level. You want to circle it. Is there another one? All right, so we're going to continue this today, um, but the problems are going to look more like 13 and 14, where um, there's one, two, three, four terms, and when you look, there is no greatest common factor. Like on 14, um, 
the leading coefficient doesn't, or the leading problem doesn't have a 2, and this doesn't have a B. So what do you do if there is no GCF? Well, there's this method for four terms called factor by throughput. So today we're going to um, work problems that don't have GCFs totally. We're going to factor by grouping. So go to your notes. Good to hear. Yeah. All right, I don't want you to like copy this in any way. Um, but you can head your notes. Head your notes, 8-5. This is factor by grouping today. A little different than just factoring by GCF, but not too different. Factoring by grouping. So... By grouping in really specific conditions, um, there has to be four or more terms, so it doesn't work for a three-term polynomial. Um, they have to have common factors that can be grouped together, and um, I guess that's all I would point out here before I show you an example. Well, this is actually a pretty good example. You have AX plus BX plus AY um, plus BY. So there's nothing in common between all four terms, but if you cover, if you cover two terms, you see that these two have a GCF of X. So you take an X out of those two. So, Taking an x out, you have a plus b. And then if you cover these two, you see that these two have a common y. So you take a y out of those two. So it's your, you're grouping the problem into two separate groups to find GCF. You take a y out of this one. Your final step, these parentheses have to match. So your final step is to put the GCFs together and keep one of the matching sets. And that's factor by grouping. You're pretty much doing a GCF out of the first two and a GCF out of the second two. Let's try one. So it's called grouping because the first thing you do is split the four term problem into two groups. So I'm going to look at the two X, Y plus 7x separate from the seven, the negative 2y minus 7, separating into two groups. Then find a GCF of each group. So what does the first group, um, Libby, what does the first group have as a GCF? What do they have in common? This isn't a 2, and it doesn't divide by 2. 
The numbers don't have a GCF, so the numbers only GCF is 1. So what could we possibly take out of these two terms? X. The greatest common factor is X. There's an X in this one and an X in this one. That means we can pull an X out. So if I pull that X out of those two terms, I have 2Y plus 7. Our second group is even more tricky. There's not a Y in common. There's not an X in common. They're both negative. So I'm actually going to factor out a negative 1. Taking a negative 1 out of this will make both terms positive. Okay, something really important has to happen for this method to work. The groups have to match. It's a really cool checkpoint. If the parentheses don't match, then it's not working. You're doing something wrong. Or maybe it's not possible. So we're doing good. Our parentheses must match. They're both 2y plus 7. So your last step is to put the GCFs in parentheses. There's two of them. Our GCFs are x and minus 1. And then keep 1. So if we were to go ahead and FOIL this and multiply it out, we would get the original problem. Should we check it? Let's check this one. You don't have to check, but let's check it. I'm not going to make you like, check your homework assignment. I could. It wouldn't be unreasonable of me. But we're just going to check this one problem. All right, let's check this by FOIL. You can always check a factoring problem by just multiplying it back out. So x times 2y would be 2xy. x times 7 would be 7x. Negative 1 times 2 would be a negative 2y, and negative 1 times 7 would be a negative 7. So this checks out. It's exactly what we started with. Anytime you're factoring, you know you've done it correctly if you get what you started with. So it's great that you can check. Who's been on this? I 
I split my groups. The second one or the first one? Okay, what's the GCF? Janelle, what are your thoughts on the second group? Negative four. Or negative five. Negative five. Those both divide, I would think, negative one based on our last example. But since they also both divide by five, we're going to factor a negative five out. Yes, Patrick? Because this one doesn't have an X in it. It has to be like what they both have. Okay. Now both of these divide by 5. And they're both negative. So the GCF will be negative 5. So if I divide both those by negative 5. Negative 20 divided by negative 5 is a positive 4. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is a positive 3. The parentheses must match, do they? Yes, yes. they do. So satisfying when they match. So we'll put the y minus 5 together. And then we'll keep one matching set. And that works. We could foil it right now. We get what we started with. We're not going to, though. I'll go back and try a different greatest common factor. Possibly rearrange the four terms. Possibly. Sometimes you just can't do it. Does not factor. Yes, thank you. All right, Joseph, next one. Patrick, what are you doing? Well, next one. You might find this easier than yesterday's. Like less variables, there's less going on. No? No one agrees. Maybe not. You ready, Jake? This is it. We have one, two, three, four terms in this problem. So instead of dealing with all four at once, we're going to put them in two groups. All right, two groups are easier in this problem. Yeah, the second one before. Jake, what's the greatest common factor in the first group? I know, you're in here. Joseph, what's the greatest common factor in the first group? A. Anything else? Three. Those divide by three and A. So go back, y'all. If you just took an A, good job. But these also divide by three. 3a. What will be left in parentheses if we divide a 3 out? Maybe I'll set up the fractions. Maybe that'll help. 
5. Yeah, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and the a's would cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. A's would cancel. That 1, B, and I don't need that 1 there even. 5 minus B. What's the greatest common factor in the next two? Cadence? Four. Very good. So this divides by four, and so does this. So uh, the four is canceled. I got a B minus five. Oh, how annoying. The parentheses don't match. I don't say match. Wait, well, hold on. The parentheses are just... Oh, because 5 minus B is, would be They're 4. Totally opposite, but B yeah. minus 5 would be negative. Negative 4. The second one would be negative 4. The, the other one would be positive. Yes, I'm not well, B is a number. All right, well, in order to wrap my mind around this, first off, I don't want them in a different order, so I'm going to go ahead and input this in standard form. In standard form, it would look like negative B plus 5. You're fine in taking the negative 4 if you see that. That's fine. But when I look at this and I, and I put the B first, like it should be, variable should be before constants, I can see that um, opposite signs are here. So one way to alleviate opposite signs is to take out a negative GCF. So what I'm going to do is um, instead of taking out a 3A, I'll take out a negative 3A. And that's going to make it B minus 5. And now the parentheses match. So my answer is negative 3a plus 4, b minus 5. So opposite signs, those are kind of like worst case scenarios. You got to go back and rework. Those should take you, you know, a little bit of effort figuring out, wait, I need to factor a negative 1 this time. All right, last one, and then you can start your assignment. Just when you write it down, write it in two groups. Tyler, what's the GCF for the first group? What's left in parentheses if you divide by negative 2x? Negative 2x. Y plus 5. The negative will change both of them to positive. Kaleo, what's the GCF in the second group? Three. That one doesn't have a Y, so I can't take Y. And that leaves me with Y plus five. Yay, parentheses match.